Hi there. Long time no see. My name is Dee and it's the third Friday of the month, which means it's time for an Art Addicts Alliance upload. I'll tell you more about them in just a second, but first I want to show you something. My piece for this video will be a watercolor painting and I'll be trying out this Arteza watercolor sketchbook for the first time. I actually won this sketchbook along with a few other items from an artist that had a giveaway here on YouTube, a channel called Ruby Porter. It seems like a really nice quality sketchbook and I've never owned a watercolor sketchbook before so I was really excited to get this. Another item I won in the giveaway happened to be the Komarebi watercolor paint set, the exact set that I already have and love. I also won a pad of Expert watercolor paper by Arteza. I'm excited to try that sometime and also some brushes. I was thinking that since I already own this set and it'll probably last me a really long time, I could pass this one along. I bought this skin tone set of alcohol markers and fine liners to also give away. Here's a closer look at the colors and I'll show them swatched on paper because I think the colors aren't as true to their caps. I originally bought these to use as a prize for a draw this in your style challenge that I wanted to host once I reached 1000 subscribers and I'm not sure when that'll happen but once it does I'll now have this watercolor set to use as an additional prize. The fine liners come in a pack of three and are 0 .01, 0 .03, and 0 .05. So once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I'll host a Draw This In Your Style challenge and the top two winners will win these. First place will get first pick. Now that you guys are hopefully pumped for that upcoming art contest slash giveaway, here's a list of the current Art Addicts Alliance members along with a new member this month, Fuzzy Dragons. Welcome aboard. Everyone, as usual, will be linked in the description so you can see their artistic interpretation of this month's prompt, which were Ghost or Urban Sketch. I chose Urban Sketch. This is definitely outside of my comfort zone of drawing faces, but seemed less intimidating than drawing a landscape. I immediately thought of the little rows of colorful townhouses that are all smushed together and drew inspiration from that. Before the fun part of painting comes in, I tried to get all the basic shapes and elements sketched out. I'll also be showing you guys how I made this DIY gouache palette inspired by Parasol Mushroom, so please stay tuned for that. I watched a Skillshare class about urban sketching and one of the tips I learned was that sometimes less detail tells more of a story. So instead of drawing every single brick on the building, I just drew small groups of them to give you the idea. And I used this rounded rectangle hole in my broken ruler to trace them out and I thought since the most of this building is angular and pointed, the rounded bricks gave it a unique look. And here's a closer look at the finished sketch before we ink. There will be more details I plan on adding that I haven't drawn in because I want to include them freehand with paint. I'm using an alcohol marker to draw in where my darkest shadows are going to be since they can darken up an area much more quickly than watercolors. Now we're ready to paint. I really liked the color combination of a rusty reddish brown with green and white, so that's what I plan to use. 
The green isn't added until the end, but it's my favorite part of the whole painting and I ended up using gouache for it. At first, I almost redrew my OC Rosie's house for my very first painting of her since I only drew a small portion of it, but I didn't really see her living in this type of house, so I thought maybe this is my other OC, Kayla's home. They live near each other, but maybe Kayla's house is closer to the city and Rosie's house is further out on farmland. I decided the paper behind it needed more protection, so I added some tape to it. So far I was really enjoying painting on this paper, but this was the real test where I added a lot more water. It curled a lot, but that wasn't an issue for me. I was more concerned with being able to get a smooth gradient, and I think it did a really nice job. I wanted there to be a warm glow of light coming from the windows to give a more homey, cozy feeling, so I used the wet on wet technique to blend yellows and oranges together. Since I lined the window bars with alcohol markers, I was able to paint right over them without worrying about them smudging and that was really nice because it made those tiny spaces in the window much easier to fill in. Watercolors dry much lighter, so it took a couple of layers to get the windows really saturated. I was loving how this was looking with the gray bricks on the white building, but I wanted it to look a bit older and more lived in, so I'll add more color to the building itself. Here is supposed to be the footage of me showing you how I made the gouache palette, but for some reason I couldn't find the clips so I just reshot a tiny bit of it for you. I bought these empty paint wells and this magnetic strip roll from Amazon and I had this tin left over from some graphite pencils I bought a while back. This is the finished palette but I'll still show you how I did it. Basically I just cut off squares of the magnet, peel off the backing and stick it to the underside of an individual palette. Then it just sits in the tin and is easily removable. I have 24 gouache tubes that I've been wanting to put in a more convenient palette, and when I saw Parasol Mushroom's video of this, it sold me. I'm realizing now that I could have just cut two long strips and stuck the wells on the strip, but hey, at least now you know. Filling the palette was fun. They aren't in the best order of colors, but I had them swatched out already, so I just stuck with that order to make it easier for myself. I couldn't get two of the tubes to open, so I'll have to come back to those later. Here's how it looks all done. The wells are easily removable, but they still stay in place. And it's airtight. Back to the painting. I thought some green vines would give a nice pop of color, and I wanted to use gouache since it's more opaque and I can layer lighter colors on top of darker colors more easily. Just adding a bit more saturation to the lights in the window.
After the vines were done, I added some more shadows to the brown areas. And here's the finished painting of Kayla's house. I actually really enjoyed this more than I thought I would. If you guys like it, maybe next time I'll repaint Rosie's house. Let me know. Don't forget to check out the rest of the AAA and see what they did. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.